Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today is August 18th, it's been a while since I've recorded, and I'm gonna take me, it's going to take me a few minutes to get back into things as usual when it's been a break. First thing I want to look at is this defect I discovered right at the end of the last video, which is that the starting balance field isn't turning red when negative. In fact, I think that's generally true of all, text, all of our, our dollars text fields. So if we run the app, and we change this to a negative, it should turn red, but it doesn't, even though the actual table does. Uh, the same is true with the cost basis and the yearly spending. Those should all be turning red. And what's really bothering me about this is it used to work. Now, offline, I actually investigated this a little bit further and discovered that I introduced this way back in episode 16, uh, 116, this defect was introduced. Um, and, and the terrible thing about it is that it's a regression that my test didn't catch. And uh, that really bugs me. Now, I was going to have to do a bunch of annoying debugging on this, but luckily Chris Ruid, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Chris, um, he's put a comment on my blog saying that the problem is that I'm now setting the, the foreground color of the J panel rather than the text field, uh, which makes a lot of sense to me. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So over here, we've got um, we're saying field dot set foreground. and field is the dollars text field. Yeah, that's definitely the problem. We're setting the foreground on dollars text field, not the, um, and not the actual color. So just as a quick spike, let's see what happens if I say field dot text field dot set foreground color. I'm going to wait a moment for Eclipse to figure out what's up. Come on, Eclipse. There we go. Um, and now let's run that and see what happens. Yep, that was the issue. Okay, so now now that we're confirmed on what the issue is, and thanks very much, Chris, for your tip there. Um, now that we know what the issue is, the question is, why did this happen? And how can we prevent it from happening again? What we want to do here, what you do at Agile Methods, is whenever you discover a problem, you want to do root cause analysis on that problem. And of course, I make mistakes all the time. Even if you've been watching up to this point, you know that I make mistakes all the time. But most of them get caught right away. This problem disturbs me because I didn't know about it. All the tests were passing all the way along. I mean, the tests are passing now, and it was a false, a false success. So what that tells me is that this test here uh, was obviously not adequate. It doesn't actually test what matters. Uh, the problem is, is with UI code, I, I don't know that there's a better way of doing it. We're saying that the that the uh, field should change color, but of course it doesn't. Uh, the field's foreground does change color, but the actual text of the foreground does not change color. Well, to begin with, I think we can fix this just by modifying the dollars text field to have a get and set foreground color that works properly. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if we create a get foreground color and we override the parents get foreground color, then uh, that should cause our test to fail. That's odd. Uh, 
Oh, I see. It's not get foreground color, it's just get foreground. So that should cause the test to fail. Except it did not work at all. Get a null pointer exception. Okay, it looks like uh, Swing is calling get foreground be probably an apparent constructor before this text field is instantiated. So I don't think we want to actually modify the built-in get foreground and set foreground of a dollar's text field. That just seems a little bit iffy. Let's see what Chris was saying about this. Well, Chris advises, um, oh, he does, okay, so what Chris has got here is he's actually looking at whether or not the text field is null and so forth. Um, you know, calling the super and doing that does address the problem that we're seeing here, but in a way that uh, I'm not really thrilled with. Honestly, we shouldn't be getting or setting the foreground color of the dollars text field directly ourselves. Um, that's more, um, it, it's, it doesn't really expect encapsulation of the dollars text field in the way I want it to. So rather than write some code here, what I'm going to do is, I think, go into dollars text field test and modify it to look at the actual text field. So, Hmm. Of course, the text field is private, so getting at that would mean diving into... Well, we do have it. It's right here, text component. So, yeah, what we want to say is, rather than saying... We should be, rather than talking to the field here, we should be talking to the text component. Now we're saying it should change color. And then here, we could simply say field.text field.set foreground. I'm not sure I want to do that. because that uh, just feels a little invasive. Well, let's go ahead and do that for now, and then we'll refactor. So that should pass. Okay, so we need to take a second look at the design of dollars text field render target adapter. Okay, so the tests are passing again, and now the question is are they actually passing for the right reason? And the answer is yes. Yeah, we've got our negative back. So that's good. All right. 
So now for some root cause analysis. We fixed, so you find a bug, and whenever you find a bug that's a real bug, you want to treat it as if it was as serious as one found by a customer in production. Uh, we're not in production yet, but we want to pretend it is. So how serious is this? Well, it's cosmetic. Uh, so it's, it's not the end of the world, but it does reflect a problem in the way we've been approaching our tests in that you know, up until this point, I've been very confident that the tests were going to catch regressions. Now I'm not so confident. So even though this is a minor cosmetic issue, I'm, I'm actually taking it quite seriously. So we fix the problem. We, write, we find a problem. We take it seriously. We write a test to fix it. We fix the test. We improve the design to prevent that kind of thing from happening again. And that still needs to be done. And then we do root cause analysis and say, what about the way we are approaching our work allowed this problem to happen in the first place. And I think, so one approach to doing root cause analysis is five wives. So why did we have this bug? Um, the five wives technique, five wise technique is one where you look, you ask why over and over again until you get down to sort of a fundamental truth. It's, uh, it's a technique that works really well in examples and is a little bit harder to apply well in real life. But let's go ahead and try it. Um, so why did we have this bug? Well, we had this bug because our test tested a panel rather than the actual field. And why did it test the panel rather than the actual field? Because we changed the dollars text field from being a text field to a panel, but we didn't change the test. Why didn't we change the test? Well, we didn't know that changing this from a text field to a panel was going to invalidate that test, uh, and the test continued to pass. So why didn't we know? Well, we were refactoring, and when you're refactoring, you don't always pay attention to everything that's going on. Um, so why weren't we paying attention? Well, I don't know that that leads anywhere interesting. Uh, we weren't paying attention because... because when I refactor, I tend to go fairly quickly and trust the test. And why do I trust the test? Because my experience has shown me that trusting the test works out. Okay, that didn't go anywhere. Um, so why did it fail? Well, we changed the text field to a J panel. Um, why didn't the test break? Well, because the test tested the field. Um, Let's go ahead and take a, I previously did some research, so I know that, um, I know that this was, this issue was introduced in episode 116. So in episode 116, what is our test look like? Right here. We didn't change this at all. We just kept doing what we were doing. And the rest of the code, we largely left unchanged. So, so part of the issue here was that JPanel and JText field were have a similar interface but behave differently. So part of the issue is the design of swing, in a sense. Um, the interface didn't change, so our code didn't break, didn't tell us what the problem was. So, and part of what I do when I refactor is I rely on the compiler telling me when I've refactored a little too uh, aggressively. So, one root cause might be that I'm, ref I'm refactoring aggressively, but I like the way I refactor. I don't really want to change that. Um, so, perhaps, so I think the root cause is really having to do with this being a swing component and different components, despite having the same API, do not have the same semantics. That's the root cause. We expected same API to equal same semantics. So what that means is that um, 
swing semantics change even when interface doesn't. Therefore, when changing, when refactoring from one swing class to another, check usage of all swing APIs. Mm, well, that's not a great set of, that's not really a great root cause analysis. I guess it's better than nothing. Um, it's now a checklist that I have to check and remember, and the chances of me actually remembering that is not so good because I have a memory like Swiss cheese. But um, I'm going to sort of put that out there for all of you viewers to take a stab at, come up, see if you can come up with something better. That's all the time we have for today's episode. So next time we're going to pick up with some more coding. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I will catch you next time.